All right, in this episode, we talk about pitching in the frontal, transverse, and sagittal planes. And why baseball should have known this a long time ago. Portio, Kevin Schultz, Stephen Godani here at the at Top Velocity hashtag Pitch and Tips show where you go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and at Top Velocity hashtag Pitch and Tips. You ask your question, anything we do here on pitching, anything we do here at Top Velocity, we answer it on the show. We've got a lot of great questions out there, but we need more. Keep them coming, guys. We want to have this going all year, so if you can keep them coming, we'll keep answering them. And uh, if you haven't already, help us uh, get it out there too. Share, subscribe. I know you're baseball players. You really don't like to share. And in a way, hasn't been a lot of sharing on the YouTube videos, tells me that this must be really good information and you're either keeping it all to yourself or maybe it's really bad information, I don't know. Huh. But either way, if you like it, come on, please give us a little something, a little something, something little and something, share something. it, throw it out there and that'll help a lot and also get us your questions. What is the question for today? El Caballete asks, I've read that power is plane specific and because of that pitchers should train more in the frontal plane, what about this? Great question. I actually had this experience, lucky enough to speak in front of a, a major league team's front office, and the head strength coach brought up the point to say that pitching is, he thought pitching was more transverse, uh, in, the, in a transverse plane, that why would you use sagittal movements or any other movements? Now, before I answer the question, I'd like to tell you a few things. Basically, there's three planes defined and what's the name of that? The, what are they called? The, there's, cert, there's a certain name for the planes I forgot. Look them up. But there's a frontal plane, which is pretty much like a lateral movement. Anything, what they do is they, they cut the body right down the middle. What? You looked at me, I was like, oh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we cut the body right down the middle. Anything side to side, frontal, anything, uh, basically cut the, down the middle of the body, anything, you know, rotational is transverse. And anything cut the, down the middle of the face, anything forward and back is sagittal. Those are the three planes, and there's going to be those are three different movement patterns. So it is, and for example, um, El Cabiete is saying it, it's a frontal movement. So he's saying pitching is just the lateral movement. And then, of course, the, the front office of the, the head strength coach, the front office of the big league team was saying it's a transverse movement. But this was my answer to the front office, and it's my answer to you, is that pitching is multiplanar, right? The first move, the stride move, is a frontal movement. It's a lateral movement. The at front foot strike, the hip rotation, trunk separation, trunk rotation, transverse movements. The four tilts, okay? The you know angular the angular velocity is the arm. All sagittal movements going forward. Okay, so it's multiplanar. So we should train all planes, which. In the 3x pitching velocity program, it's a fusion system. So we, we fuse in a lot of ways to train in those planes. And we train in all those planes. And, and ultimately, even if you were just you know, a one planar movement uh, skill, you still should train in multi-planes multi uh, for the purpose of athleticism and the purpose of health and many other things. I would never want you to stick to one plane. But in the case of pitching, and that's why I think it is the most highly skilled movement at a high velocity level in any sport and it is the fastest movement ever recorded in the laboratory um, it is a multi planar movement and very complicated in how all those planes mix and work together to enhance speeds from the ground up and you should train in all those planes but you better know what you're doing if you're really going to see the effect as you develop things from the ground up any input you have on on this perspective or this question or what do you got? Um, as, when I look at it as a strength coach, I look at it as muscle contractions, or muscle contractions, and I'm trying to build force production. So I'm going with the lifts that create the most force production. So I'm gonna start with those, and I'll train those, whatever plane they might be in, okay? And I'm gonna train those lifts so I'm performing with optimal force, so my body's starting to put out that force production. All right, my muscles are firing off. Every muscle I train, I teach it to fire with optimal force. 
Okay, and then after that, once I've got that force built up, then I start to implement my more skill-specific activity, then my body starts to coordinate and use my new strength in that movement. So when I'm training in a plain specific manner, as long as I'm getting the ultimate force production, I believe, then that's what I'm going for. And then later I'll transition that into skill specific activity and my body's smart enough to start using that new strength it's got and start putting it into that. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah, and I, I think that makes a good point because just because I think a lot of strength coaches will say, well, you're, you're building power in a power clean and that's a vertical movement. There's no way that transfers to the mound in a transverse movement or whatever they think it is or in what we believe a multiplanar movement. Well, I understand it doesn't completely transfer, and I will say that, but some of the key components will. For example, the quad, the calves, the glutes, all the muscles that are highly active in, say, a power clean, the ability of those muscles, or in those muscles hypertrophy and the motor unit recruitment becomes more uh, effective and the rate coding, you know, the synchronization of the motor units, all that is not really specific to the plane. Meaning that quad was just told to fire, so it fired. Of course, the tension was at a certain angle, so we know we can hand, it's gonna fire a certain way to, at that angle in a power clean, and it, it's obviously gonna hand it a little bit different in, a, in, a, in the pitching delivery, in a frontal movement, say in your stride, but still, it's, it's, it's like, it still gives us a bigger piece to work with, where if I'm sitting in a stride, trying to build the same kind of uh, muscle that I built in a power clean, good luck, right? How the heck are you going to load a stride the same way you load a power clean? So the point is, is, if there was a better way to do it on the mound, we would do it. We had to go into Olympic lifting because that's the best solution right now and I think it probably will always be the best solution until they start um, you know, building crazy machines to, to load our, our pitching deliveries. But right now with the power clean, we can take the power that develop in that quad, we can bring it to the pitching delivery, and then we teach the muscle how it activates a little bit differently in these positions, but still the benefits, uh, all the new mechanism that we built in that quad uh, can now be kind of slightly conformed to the, the, the different move in the pitching delivery, and we have a better uh, a system. We have a better uh, machine there to work with than if we just sat there in the pitching delivery and tried to just out of the the specific movement, the sport specific movement, tried to get the the same explosiveness in that in that quad as that we could get in a power clean. You know, it's not it's not the it's not a, an ideal system, but there's no better way right now. This is right now the best way to do that, and you're going to have to mix things or you know do different things in your training to try to get um, a better sport specific movement because right now, good luck on the mound trying to load. The movement and, and getting the same result, right? Any input you have? Uh, yeah, I I would say it's kind of like for like sp I'm just gonna use sprinting as like an uh, as like an example for it too. It, it it's like saying like oh yeah, sprinters don't benefit from uh, squatting heavy because uh, it it's not exactly like a sprint. It's like when sprinters are are building strength like Dion Lewis I think his name was the Olympian he they said that he could squat 600 pounds and it's like that completely helped him with his force production especially at the beginning of the sprint when the first 10 yards is, is mainly force production to get their speed up and he had an awesome start so it's the same thing with pitching like you still need that force production to create high velocity so if you're just saying like hey like yeah all of this stuff doesn't create force production then you're not like applying it to everything like especially with the sprints with everything it's like it all combines that it's been shown that lifting heavy and doing that stuff not it, it all will convert to what you're trying to do that's not a retarded but whatever no that was right and, and and we've made that example before i mean how arrogant is baseball because there's a lot of egos in baseball that think <clears throat> well it's stupid to lift because it's not going to help you throw harder on the baseball field meaning Lifting is going to have no except or is not going to do anything for the baseball player, for the pitcher, for the hitter. Um, then why does it do something for the golfer? Or why does it have effect on uh, the football player? I mean, is baseball that much different than those skills that um, for some reason it doesn't work for us? I think that's the crazy thing because when I tore my rotator cuff and doctors said I'd never play again, I'm like, 
Well, I see in other sports guys tearing their rotator cuffs and playing again. I see javelin throwers tearing their rotator cuffs and coming back. I see, um, you know, quarterbacks tearing their rotator cuffs and coming back. Why am I done in baseball? Well, I realize that the conventional wisdom is in baseball is that you're born with it. You can't develop it. Weight training, all the things the other sports do has no effect on the baseball player because for some reason, when we start throwing on a mound, it, we're not humans anymore or something. I mean, I, I, it just blew my mind. So when I went into javelin and I went to football trainers and I saw what they would do and I said, all right, I'm going to do what they were doing to these other sports and I'm going to do it to me. And then I saw the benefits. I realized, wow, baseball is completely in the, in the dark on this, in the dark ages, and they're not opening their eyes to what's going on. And I think that's the big problem here. And that's why we're getting a lot of questions in, in, in baseball that are really kind of like simple questions in, in the strength and conditioning world um, because baseball is now just starting to open up to it. Okay, I guess strength training works. And it's like they're almost wanting to reinvent the wheel. Guys, let's just get caught up. We're, we're really far behind. Let's get caught up with golf, right? Golf is even more physically advanced than we are. Volleyball. Volleyball. Let's get, get caught up with... Don't think football. Football's way ahead of us. You know, Olympic lifting, gone, you know. Let's get caught up with golf, with volleyball, with, uh, with tennis, right? I mean, sports where they're way ahead of us. They've accepted this a while ago. And I think that's what needs to happen. And if we do that, um, we're going to be more educated on how to really uh, do what we need to do in our training environment to, to make us better athletes, healthier athletes, higher, better performers on the field. Is that it? Good. All right. Thanks. That was a good question, though. We love those questions. If you have a question, go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And at Top Velocity, uh, hashtag pitching tips, we'll ask the question on the show. And if you haven't already, go to topvelocity.net. Check out the programs. Come down to 3 Velocity Camp, and uh, we'll see you again. Yeah. Holla, holla. Holla. We them boys. Holla. We them boys.